This is Bob Capetta, professor of mathematics at College of DuPage. And this lesson is going to show us how to access Minitab remotely and how to use some of the key features. I am currently on the COD webpage, home.cod.edu. And to access Minitab, we are going to go to as1.cod.edu. As we pull that up, here is our first screen. We have a username and a password, and the username is ctx-minitab. And the password will change each semester. Hopefully you have access to that. If not, contact me, and I will provide it to you. We're going to hit Log On. And the first time that you log on, you will likely see this screen. It will enable you to download the client server so that you can access Citrix. If you've already accessed Citrix, already downloaded it, you don't need to do this. You can download it directly from COD or you can download it directly from Java. So those are two choices that you have to enable you to use Citrix. Hopefully you've gotten that done. I have. It's already installed on my computer. So at that point you are given two options. We have Minitab 15 and we have Minitab 16. The two programs are essentially the same, so I will open up the later version. I'm going to click on Minitab 16. And then we're going to launch the client server. And it's going to go ahead and get started. It takes a while for this to load. So we are waiting for Citrix to get started. We're running Minitab version 16. I am going to manage the windows a little bit so that you can see them. So just move them in ever so slightly. Move them in, shrink this up a little bit, and move this up a little bit. So there's two windows that we have to work with. We have a session window and we have a worksheet window. Session window up here, notice at this point the session bar is blue. When I click down here, the worksheet window, the line that says worksheet one is blue. So you access one at a time, either the session window or the worksheet window. So click up in the session window. And the first thing I want you to do every time is to go to editor and enable commands. This is the simplest way for us to use Minitab commands to do statistical analysis. Now if you click down on the worksheet, now the worksheet is blue, this behaves essentially like a spreadsheet so that we can name a column anything we want. So I'm going to name the first column data and I'm going to plug some numbers in there that represents data. Maybe we can assume these are some test scores from a statistics class. Let's assume the class is a pretty good class. But there might be some not so good students in there as well. So I have 12 data points in my set. And I would like to find the descriptive statistics representing those data points. The descriptive statistics are mean, standard deviation, median, mode, and other sorts of things. So what are we going to do? We're going to use the command describe. Describe C1. That will give me all of the descriptive statistics that we need for the data set in C1. And you'll notice uh, on my computer I have an N of 12, a mean of 80.42, standard error of the mean, standard deviation minimum, Q1, median, Q3, maximum. You may not have the ends set up. Uh, that's not crucial to have that, but you should have all of the other bits of information. So 12 items with a mean of 80.42 and a standard deviation of 15.86. That's what we have for this data set. Now if I want to get a visual representation of this data set, I am going to go ahead and ask the computer to give a histogram for the data in C1. So I'm going to say histogram. C1, and I'm going to spell histogram correctly, and we're going to look at our picture. 
And you'll notice our data set there is kind of interesting in terms of how it's shaped. Uh, I am not going to save that, so I'm going to just discard that, but we've seen the picture. I could also do a box plot for the data in C1. And you'll notice that we have a sort of skewed data set in our example there. So two visual representations of the data set, both the histogram and the box plot, are easily obtained from Minitab using the commands histogram and box plot. Let's take a look at the second uh, set of data, and we'll call these things speed. I want you to imagine, or speeds, I want you to imagine that we're taking data on a highway, looking at the speeds of the cars as they're traveling. Now, if you start putting your numbers in here, notice you're starting at the eighth data point, and that's not what I want to do. I want to start at the first data point. So you've got to come over to the right side, scroll up to the top, and now we're on the first data point, and we can go ahead and put in our information. So let's assume most people are following the speed limit. That, of course, may not be a realistic assumption, but we will assume that anyway. A few are certainly going above 55 or 65, and we have 15 numbers now in our data set. If we want to describe that data set, again, the command is simply going to be describe C2. And what do we get when we describe C2? We have, again, a mean of 58.07 with a standard deviation of 9.85, median number in the middle of 55, Q1 and Q3, we will be talking about that soon. So we have our descriptive statistics there. If we want to see both sets of descriptive statistics at the same time, we say describe C1, C2, and you'll notice we can compare them as we are looking at it. Okay, our first data set was supposed to be test scores. And I want you to imagine, if you will, that we're going to go ahead and put a little curve on this test and we want to add five points to every test score. If we're going to add five points to every test score, we want 76 to turn into 81. So let's call these curve or curved. These are going to be curved test scores, and that's in data set C3. So my command here is going to be let C3 equal. We want to add 10 points to the first data set. Let's say 10 plus C1. So of course 76 should become 86, 87 should become 97, etc. And you will notice that's exactly what happened. And now what do you expect to happen to the descriptive statistics? Well if we want to see them we can say describe C1 and C3 and we can compare the curve data to the original data. So we have data and we have curve. Both have 12 items. Notice the mean went from 80.42 to 90.42. Mean went up by 10. But the standard deviation didn't change. Standard deviation is the measure of the spread in the data. And the fact of the matter is the spread hasn't changed. The spread continues to be the same. We've just moved everything. We've changed the center. And you'll notice the center is changed here as well. For the median, median was 86 and adding 10 to each item, we now get a median of 96. So this lesson has shown us that it's relatively easy for us to access Minitab using Citrix. We can use the describe command to get descriptive statistics. We can use the histogram command to get one visual representation of the data. We can use the box plot to get another visual representation of the data. And we can use the let command to convert new data, data from old data and by adding 10 to each number, we notice that the means change, the median changes, but the standard deviation remains the same.